info, right. Twitter or YouTube, because you get alerts on your YouTube when we're coming on. But if you'll go there, you will see a photo <laughs> of my former co-host, Jason Minix, normally in a blue shirt. He's out in Arizona celebrating and preparing. I guess they went to some sort of a, like a pool party. Pool party. Little you know, party. and uh, there's pictures floating yeah, around happened. of them, them, Jason Minix and his lovely wife, Joanna. Love Joanna. Twinning. They are wearing the same shirt. <laughs> and uh, Jason Minix doesn't seem happy. Uh, the shirt is nice, but other than Halloween. No. Is this fair? Is this cool? Other than Halloween. You're not allowed can to we... do this because uh, <laughs> you, just, you just can't. For uh, There's so many reasons why that shouldn't have happened. But and, and that in itself is one thing. But if you do that, if if you are seen in public wearing the same blouse that your wife is and wearing. And he put it on social media. I would have never known if he didn't post it. You have opened the door to ridicule <laughs> for, for no other reason than you announced the fact that you and your wife went someplace wearing the same shirt. Miller Lite with you palm had, trees. Either she had on a man shirt or you had on a lady shirt. One or the other. <laughs> You were wearing lady clothes out with your wife. Now, or, now before we, before y'all, you know, like, hey, they big, take it easy. If I'm, if I'm not no, mistaken, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, the very handsome Jack Thompson did this once, and from what <laughs> I was told, y'all ran him through the ring. He was drug as he deserved when you wear the same shorts, leopard print <laughs> shorts. As uh, your girlfriend, and at the same time, wear a matching fishing shirt as your girlfriend. Yes, you're going to take a little bit of abuse. You deserve it. Now, sometimes you, you know, you sacrifice your body for the team. Sometimes you do something, knowing full well that I'm going to take it from my boys, but at least happy wife, happy life. Absolutely. So I understand why you did it, but don't come back and say, don't make fun of me. <laughs> don't come back because, you know, my wife picked it out being, no, no. Be you nice. put, I'm being nice. He, no, I'm you just took, saying. you know, you sacrificed your body for the team. I understand. You took a charge. You took the charge, man. You took it from a six nine power forward who had a good three dribble start. You took the charge. Congratulations. But now you get to feel the pain. What the hell were you doing, man? It's because it's one thing to put that on and go, all right. But then if you put it on the socials, he put it on. You the can't. Go, don't make fun of me though. I didn't see this on Joe's page. This was on Minix's. I, I would not have known. None of us would have known if he didn't post it. As so soon you, as he did, I was like, dude, I got six hours of radio tomorrow. Thank you for the content. <laughs> so um, please, please, if you follow Minix on the gram, <laughs> please go there right now and comment and on Twitter. He posted it on Twitter. If it's on the Twitter, and go Facebook. jump on there and just comment like, is that a lady shirt? <laughs> I would have said, does your mom dress you? But evidently it's your wife. He was tricked. Something like that. Or tell him, I thought you only had blue. I've never seen him in anything other than a blue or a red or with some university or pro team. He's really? wearing a white. You know what? Not a when was the last it? time you saw Jason Minix in a white pattern yeah. shirt? You know what? I have. But don't make fun of me. My wife, my wife wanted us to twin up, but don't make fun of me. So please, please go to his feet. <laughs> Yeah, go check it out. He posted it. Please, yeah, please. We just we're just, just commentating. You put it out there to the social. Just go let him know. You and he th if you think he looks good, tell him. Yeah, but just tell him the truth. That's he's all. We a have. lot of compliments, Rob. Good. I hope he. And that's the other thing. He got a lot. He of said compliments. he got a lot of compliments from who? You can't make fun of me. I got a lot of compliments. Did they have a walking stick and shades? <laughs> <laughs> were they taking change on the corner? Hey, sir, with the lady shirt, do you get your spare quarter? You look good. Oh, man. I needed that chuckle. <laughs> hey, I had a lot hey, of laughs in New hey, York, uh, but I needed that chuckle. On the download, don't make fun of me. Yeah. Uh, you know, seriously, it's, a, it's a, my wife. Be hey, nice. Be nice. It was tricked. You, no? It, Wait, did he make fun of Tricked would have been you got dressed in the dark and didn't realize what you had on until you walked into the light. <laughs> did he make fun of Jack? Yes, oh, he blew. Of he course he did. Jack. <laughs> For the very same reasons. So, yes, I understand that you didn't want to wear it, Ooh. but once you put it on. I, 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 can't say, I can't say I've ever done that. I've been, my, I've been with my lady 20 years. When was the last time you left the house and looked down and go, what have I done? Mm, ooh. <laughs> I've had a few of those nights where I would fashion, like, mistakes. I, uh, 
My I've worst, had a few. My worst fashion error. I need to hear this. <laughs> happened. Uh, this is a sports talk radio show, by the way. No, we'll we promise we will get to sports. Promise. Uh, happened back. It's been a long time ago. Back when I was uh, still in college, I was working uh, at out at North Star Mall. Okay. And I had met a girl that I was going to take out that. And I met her at the mall. At the mall. At the mall. She. I think she worked at one of those. Stores. That used to be a pickup spot for Ooh, us. That was oh, our spot. Yeah. yeah and especially sure. if you worked at the mall. Right. You. You know. You. I so worked at finish line. I picked up a few. At there's the a girl I, yeah. I was chasing. Uh, I can even tell you the name of the store, but it's long gone. Okay. It was uh, Elaine Manukian was the name of the store because I remember she's a beautiful girl. So I uh, I asked her out early in the, you know, like early on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm obviously not dressed to go out. So I decide I'm going to go right in the, the, the tuxedo place that I worked at. <laughs> You remember the Tux place in North Star right outside of Foley's? Remember Foley's? Right yeah, outside Foley's. of there at yeah, the yeah, bookstore, yeah. right out there. I uh, ask her out and I decide, well, I'm, I'm going to go out. I got to go get some clothes. Right. So I don't have a lot of time to go get something. I'm not going to be able to go home. So I decide I'll duck into Foley's, buy a new shirt, and go out with this girl. So I, I'm in a hurry when we get off and I go and I just go grab a, I don't know what this music is either. Yeah, so I did, but I like the bed. This is pretty. So I, I, like uh, I grab what I think is just a black shirt. Okay. Just a black button up shirt that goes with what I've got on. Grab it off the rack. Look at it. Go fit. Buy it. Go get dressed. And we're out. And I'm out trying to, you know, you're trying to be the man. Yeah, I got you. So we're out at the club. I, I forget probably Park Place. <laughs> <laughs> Park Place. Park oh place, my or, gosh. Yeah. Or maybe Midnight Rodeo. It's one of those. And uh, I think it's working well. I think I look <laughs> good. I think I am buttoned up. I have appropriately dressed and yeah. I got money in my pocket and the date is going quite well. We're out dancing, moving around, and I catch a reflection of myself in the mirror. On the front, I'm wearing a black <laughs> shirt. On the back is this big neon like print that I never saw. You were that hyped for the date that well, you didn't even pay attention? I just grabbed the shirt. I remember, I get off work. Yeah. It's time to meet. We're going, and I'm wanting to look good. So I went, on the back, it had this big, like, orange and green neon thing, and it said something akin of, like, Pedro's Taco Hunt. No. <laughs> but you didn't I catch... had no idea that. It looked like I had just gotten off work, like I was busting tables and decided yeah. to go out with this. Uh, but it was... Like you were, yeah, you were like you were just getting off of Henry's puppy. This thing was was glowing, glowing. <laughs> so when did you know? <laughs> when did you notice it? About halfway through the evening, I realized that I was wearing some sort of weird logoed. And right now, it'd probably be considered cool. No, it would you be probably no. I would have been uh, no. I would have been canceled. Yeah. Oh, it was it was it was oh, so gotcha. out there. I was yeah, like, yeah. "What am I wearing, and why been... are they selling this in San Antonio?" It was Man, not. I've had too many. Anything I, I, I was some, proud of. Yeah, I've made some bad decisions over the years. I can't think of a great story like that, but trust me, I've had some bad fashion nights. And that was my fault. My wife didn't buy it for me. Right. Although, Let's go to the what song is that? Who is it? Cindy Lauper? <laughs> it is uh, kind of a pair. It's from How I Met Your Mother. Oh. Robin uh, Shervosky used to be a Canadian Did teenage Did you tell pop James star. Pledger that we I think went Minnick's to the How You yeah. met, We Met Your Mother You went bar. to McGee's Pub. We went to McGee's Pub. So that they is the inspiration. The, they shot some of the show in there? No. Uh, I was told it doesn't look anything like it. The bartenders, or, or not the bartenders, the writers from the show that created How I Met Your Mother, because I went to McGee's too, and it doesn't look like McLaren's from the show. Oh. But it's a bar that they went to in New York that was the inspiration for McLaren's oh, club on the got show. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Got <laughs> we you. went and enjoyed. Yeah, we had a good time in there. Really good time. I think. Oh, yeah, that was the night. That was the, That's, uh, that was that the, was the hot dog <laughs> night. So for those that don't listen, and we're going to dive into some headlines, get you caught up in yeah. Sports Center in a, minute, in a minute. Don't forget Peter Burns for the SEC Network will be here just around the corner. On, uh, on that particular evening, it was our first night out, and Rudy was his first night in New York. And uh, the I, night had gone very well. And, and, and before we left, Rudy had a couple of goals. One was to go get a good sobret hot dog, corner dog, get the snap, get the relish, get everything. So we hadn't he hadn't had a chance yet. So it was about three a.m. <laughs> and uh, there was a sobret uh, cart and uh, really a, an entire falafel stand right there. We right were on, outside of our hotel. Yeah, we were on fifty seventh, fifty second, and seventh, right off yeah. of Times Square. Busy, busy area. So it's still hopping. It's still it's 3 a.m. I mean, but it's still people out and about. A lot of people, yeah. So Rudy go, we're coming back to the hotel after an evening of 
celebration. <laughs> We go into the hotel, first of all, and we turn around and Rudy's not there. Rudy has seen the hot dogs. I know. And, I didn't even tell them I was no, going to the hot dogs. No, kept going down there. the street. So we go to find him. And uh, as we get there, Rudy's already ordered the dog <laughs> and is getting ready to pay. And he reaches into his wallet. And, you know, room keys look a lot like credit cards. They have a little magnetic. Kind of. So Rudy <laughs> is fumbling through his wallet. And he reaches out and he's beginning to hand his room key to the <laughs> to the dog sales dude to buy the hot dog and he could see the sales dude looking at the card like what am i doing i just made this dog that he can't buy and so, he, he, so luckily johanna was there like no nah, rudy put that away yeah you're not going to be able to buy anything with your room key because i ordered a hot dog and chicken and strips. then he had the dog which was made right then and then he ordered the most difficult thing to prepare on a street corner something that is deep fried so the dude had to dig around through his dry ice, had to dig into his dry ice chicken tenders. Come on, Rudy. And throw that into the, the uh, fish grease that is on the corner <laughs> of 52nd and 7th to cook him up some chicken. Which proceeded to take 20 minutes yeah, and 30, de- it was 30 degree weather, and they waited for me like some true champs. They were true riders. And, Why? And plus, the worst part is... You dropped them. So <laughs> I'm hitting the right to go into the hotel and I see Jason, Joanna, and Erica keep walking straight. And I'm like, oh, party's still going. I was like, where are we going? Nowhere. Nowhere no, with you're, you. You're done. They escorted me <laughs> into the whole thing. is now complete. They, they, they cut me off. Yes. <laughs> they you're too heavy to carry, Rudy. You're too heavy to move around. We had to get you there under your Can't own. Can't weekend at Bernie's, you man. No, <laughs> they did. But see, we knew this was only night one. It was night one, yeah. That was really just the beginning. And of I had R&R. Yes, and then we had a, a 4 a.m. wake up <laughs> the next morning, or 5 a.m. wake up. We got that extra hour, but but to Rudy's credit, he got he got that taken care of immediately. He got this sovereign and went back. What did you think of the bars being open till like four in the morning? It's it's the gift Wonderful. and the curse. Yes, because once once you're past a certain point, you don't, you don't care. You won't you don't care. That's the problem. Because Saturday, Rob and I enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> yes, we did. We had a great time at the USAA party. And then, and this was so, so funny. We're going upstairs to the elevator on Saturday night. And I look at Rob and he looks at me. And I look at Rob and he looks at me. <laughs> we said a few more yeah. at the hotel bar. <laughs> and Rob like, just hits a Yui. Like, let's, and I was like, yeah, let's yeah. Let's do this. Let's go. Yes. And, and luckily, there was someone there with a credit card ready to buy us some drinks. <laughs> I was a boss. Oh, let me get another double crown, <laughs> light ice. Did you finally get to try falafel? And no, he, he we, didn't. We, we didn't. The we, line was long. And I, to, Rob was saying it all weekend, falafel, falafel, falafel. But then when I finally was ready to do it, the lines, they have the longest lines in New York. Yes. And so I was like, it must be. And it smelled fantastic. But their line was long. All three. There was like three in a row, and they all had a long line. I was like, damn, this must be with legit stuff. But, Good trip. Yeah. We want to thank you, Great SAA. Trip. Thank you. Army Navy is truly one of the more remarkable events. It goes beyond sports. Yeah. And SAA. this one, if you had the opportunity to watch it, I hope you saw halftime. I hope you saw it. If you did, you felt a little bit more American. You stood a little bit taller. Mm-hmm. It is a truly remarkable weekend. It is celebrated appropriately. And USAA is the perfect partner for this. And we can't thank them enough for what they do, what they do for the academies what they do for all that are involved, what they do for the media that does all that. It is an extraordinary event. And I hope um, that we represented it well. I hope that we tried. I hope we let you know what it felt like to be there because it's unlike anything that we do anywhere. And you want to feel like you really haven't accomplished much. Walk one, let one of the couple of those generals walk past you. And you're like, damn, I really have. Or Admiral, you're like, you know, I really haven't accomplished much. No, you, These yeah. are the war veterans with bodies on their, they have body counts, you know, defending me. And I'm sitting here thinking I'm somebody with my little radio show out here in New York. <laughs> and then an Admiral walks by, you're like, oh, we you uh, really haven't done much in life. No, I, you feel like an abject failure. When you sit down and you interview uh, uh, Pete yes. Dawkins from the Pete Army. Pete Dawkins, yes. Heisman Trophy winner in 59, Rhodes Scholar in 60. Uh, commanding general of five different high end all the way up to the Pentagon. He started his own business that is now worth nearly a billion dollars and he's still plugging along with a nice watch. With yeah. a great watch. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen an, uh, a Royal Oak watch in person. Do you have another Wayne Peacock moment? 
we with I, anyone? I, I we caught <laughs> we did have <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> he gave he gave Wayne Peacock a nickname I, I, that I, that's gonna that's gonna stick with him throughout his tenure at USAA. I accidentally well I didn't accidentally I called him the Grand Poobah of USAA <laughs> on air. <laughs> I didn't really remember even saying it. Because, you know, sometimes the first time you did it Well, I, and, you know, everybody kind of rolled with it. But I didn't realize that was like it, it appeared. I don't know. They liked it. All yeah. the people that work for him. So, oh, his, he's just going to love his it. His COO came up to Rob and she goes, did you call Wayne Peacock the Grand Poobah on radio? And me and Rob look at each other. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to end well. And she was like, we loved it. We introduced him as that <laughs> at our little state of the union. I was like, yeah, we called him the Grand Poobah. <laughs> 